He was a man who killed as though he was made for it, as though it was his sole purpose in life. And to him, perhaps, that was the case. His number of victims, either suspected or confirmed, makes the skin crawl either way. In this episode, we discuss the case of one of America's most prolific serial killers, Samuel Little. Let's open the serial killer file. This episode of Seriously Strange is sponsored by Audible. Check the description below for more information. It was September 5th, 2012, at a homeless shelter in Louisville, Kentucky. The shelter was full of people down on their luck, but one man among them was in a much more dire situation, one that he himself had caused. Police arrived at the homeless shelter and found who they were there for, Samuel Little. But this was no youthful adolescent. It wasn't even someone middle-aged. No, police slapped a pair of handcuffs on a 72-year-old man who appeared to be no threat to anyone. But that assumption would be quite wrong, in a way that not even police could have expected. They were there to have Samuel Little extradited to California to face a narcotics charge. Upon taking some of Samuel's DNA, the horrible truth began to unravel and the terror that was Samuel Little was about to come to light. On June 7, 1940, Samuel Little was born in Reynolds, Georgia. His mother was believed to have been a prostitute, and his father's presence in his life isn't known whatsoever. It was possible that Samuel's mother became pregnant from one of her clients. With a child and a plethora of new responsibilities, Samuel's mother took him, packed up, and moved to Lorraine, Ohio, where Samuel's grandmother resided. It was at this time that his grandmother started to take care of him, his mother fading out of the picture more. This was a recipe for a dysfunctional child, and Samuel's childhood held true to that idea. He attended Hawthorne Junior High School and was often getting into trouble. This aside, his grades were lower than average as well. By the age of 16, Samuel was getting around, traveling from Lorraine, Ohio to Omaha, Nebraska, where he was arrested for breaking and entering. Samuel was sent to an institution for juvenile offenders. This place would do nothing to stop him from evolving as a criminal. Before he was even 25, he had spent three years in prison for breaking into a furniture store in Lorraine. In his late 20s, Samuel moved back in with his mother, who had since relocated to Florida. It was here that he held a few different jobs, one of which involved working at a cemetery. Then, Samuel had decided that staying put in one place truly wasn't for him at all, so he started to travel around the country, with his criminal demeanor not subsiding in the least. In fact, it only became worse. He had been arrested and sentenced to prison numerous times for crimes as petty as shoplifting and as severe as sexual assault and armed robbery. If any of the heinous crimes he had committed were enough to keep him in prison, many lives would have been saved, but that's not the case, sadly. By the time 1975 came around and Samuel was in his mid-30s, he had been arrested 26 times in 11 states for similar crimes. Despite his relentless pursuit of a criminal lifestyle, Samuel was continually released from prison and, unfortunately, innocent women would pay the ultimate price.
It was 1982 when Samuel Little was arrested and charged with the murder of a 22-year-old woman named Melinda LaPree. This was in Mississippi, though while under investigation for this murder, which he wasn't indicted for, he was transferred to Florida. It was here that he was brought to trial for another crime, but not just any other crime. The trial was for the murder of yet another woman, 26-year-old Patricia Mount, whose dead body was discovered the same year that Samuel was arrested for the murder of Melinda LaPree. Witnesses for the prosecution were able to point to Samuel as the man who they had seen Patricia Mount spending time with the night before she vanished. However, the court wasn't fully convinced by the testimonies of the witnesses and made a tragic mistake. Samuel was acquitted in January of 1984. Released after reasonable suspicion regarding two murders, if only the court system had known what horrors lived inside Samuel that he was yet to unleash. In 1984, Samuel was arrested yet again for kidnapping, assault, and the strangulation of a 22-year-old woman named Lori Barros. Thankfully, Lori survived the attack. After only a month, he was found with yet another woman in the same area, this time in the back seat of a car. She had been beaten and was unconscious due to Samuel having strangled her too. For each of these crimes, Samuel was sentenced to prison time. For the attempted murder of two women, Samuel served only two and a half years. He was released in February of 1987, and he moved to Los Angeles immediately upon his release. He committed over 10 more murders here, but he was far from finished. In fact, he would continue his murder rampage all the way until 2005. After his capture in 2012 at the homeless shelter, he was tied to more and more murders, and the Melinda LaPree case was reopened. Overall, Samuel Little was connected to the murders of 93 women across numerous states. He was a traveling killer for about half of his life, and it was found that he had been murdering women since 1970. On September 25th, 2014, Samuel was found guilty and finally sentenced to life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. Despite the overwhelming evidence against him, Samuel continued to proclaim his innocence until 2016. But it was a little over two years later, in November of 2018, that Samuel began to confess to murders, and in May, sat down and spoke with a Texas Ranger. It was here where the floodgates truly began to open, and eventually Samuel Little confessed to dozens of murders, totaling more than 90 across 14 states. In late November of 2018, the FBI had announced that due to Samuel's confessions and information on where he had dumped bodies, they were able to confirm 34 of his confessions, and the story just continued to unravel, with more and more dead women caught up in Samuel's web of murder. Samuel Little has drawn many portraits over the time he's been incarcerated. Portraits of the women he killed, the lives he snuffed out. The FBI released many of these portraits in hopes of solving the trail of cold cases left in Samuel's wake. At least one of them has solved a case. Samuel is now bound to a wheelchair and suffers from diabetes and a heart condition a shell of his former self. Serving three life sentences without the possibility of parole after being convicted for only three murders. At 79 years old, his death could be just around the corner, but it's quite likely that many of Samuel's victims will never be identified. And the people that knew and cared and loved them have never and will never know peace or closure. Many of those people have surely passed on without answers regarding the disappearances 
of the people they cared for. If only Samuel Little had been punished more efficiently for his endless record of crimes, so much pain and heartbreak could have been avoided, and many of his victims would still be alive today. This episode is sponsored by Audible. I'm entirely unable to read, which is why I have my twin brother, Dob, who none of you know about, read all of my scripts for me at gunpoint. Thankfully, I don't need to know how to read to take advantage of Audible's amazing service. Audible is the unbeatable provider of audiobooks, ranging from all sorts of topics like motivational, horror, mystery, fantasy, and more and they even have best sellers too. This time of year is loaded with running around and getting things done. From buying thoughtful gifts for friends and family to buying really shitty gifts to passive aggressively get back at someone you totally despise. It's really not the best time to sit down and read a book, is it? <laughs> Why? Well, because there just isn't enough time to do it at all, you silly goose. But with Audible, you can have a captivating audiobook read to you while you're getting everything done. And books can teach you things and change your life, or so I've been told. Because, again, I'm unable to read, which I personally blame Santa for because he never brought me the ability to read like I asked him to. Well, this year, I ain't asking. And right now, you can give yourself the amazing gift of 53% off of your first three months with Audible. Just by going to audible.com slash Rob, linked in the description below, or texting Rob to 500-500. That comes to only $6.95 a month. 53% is over half people, okay? May not be able to read, but I can do the maths. You can choose three titles every single month, one being an audiobook, with the other two being exclusive Audible originals that you can't hear anywhere else in the universe. Take that, alien scum. And you can listen on any device, anytime, anywhere with the Audible app. Whether you're driving to work, driving to a holiday party, training at the gym relentlessly to do battle with Santa because he destroyed your life, or if you're just getting things done around your home. Plus, Audible makes it easy to exchange your audiobooks, and you keep any audiobooks in your library forever, even if you cancel. I've been listening to True Crime Addict by James Renner, a gripping story involving the chilling disappearance of Maura Murray. It's sure to have you on the edge of your seat and locking your doors, which you should do anyway, by the way. So this season, expand your horizons and give yourself the gift of listening by going to audible.com slash Rob, linked below, or text Rob to 500-500. Thanks for listening. Thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you're notified of every new episode. And I'll see you next time.